Um, all right, so who would like to pray today? Can I pray, ma'am? Please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful morning. We thank you for the arrangement that you make for us that would we'll be able to study your word. You tell us to study the word so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. Therefore, Lord, as we study this book of Acts and Apostle Paul's life, Lord, may we get out what you wanted us to get so that we will be able to serve you on the earth. And later we'll be with you forever in eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Uh, so the last class was more of an introduction where we saw what the book of Acts uh, is all about. We um, saw that it was written by Luke, uh, who was, uh, apart from you know many other hats that he wore, he was a travel companion of Apostle Paul. And most likely, he wrote it as a defense brief for one of the Roman officials um, to help uh, Paul, you know, uh, during his trial, um, and this was also most likely written somewhere um, uh, between somewhere like 65 to 70 uh, AD is is what uh, people say, uh, and uh, we see here a, a wonderful account of um, the ministry of Jesus after his re resurrection, followed by the empowering of his apostles and then the ministry of the apostles uh, in Jerusalem and the regions around. So you know, we will uh, continue from where we stopped in the last class. There's also a question uh, that we had uh, in class that I will answer first and then we will you know get further into it. I think uh, some camera is uh, not... Um, like I just request everyone if you can, uh, yeah. I mean, as long as you are looking into the camera, that's fine. But if not, then yeah, it'll be good if you can put off your cameras, please. All right. I uh, don't want the class to be disturbed by any movement. All right. Um, yes. So uh, in the last class, uh, Shri Kumar uh, asked us uh, about Matthias. And he said that, uh, is he on the call yet? Uh, doesn't look like. But I'll go ahead and answer his question anyway. Uh, so he said that Matthias's name is not seen anywhere else in the uh, New Testament. But strangely, he is selected as the 12th apostle in the first chapter of the book of Acts. Um, and uh, was Matthias present during the Passover meal? that Jesus had together with his disciples. So the answer to that question is not very straightforward. When you read the accounts of the Passover meal, uh, it uh, seems like the 12 apostles were the one who sat with Jesus and had the meal. So uh, Matthias is not counted in there. Um, and uh, that would be the answer, a straightforward answer to his question, uh, whether Matthias was part of the Passover meal. So we don't see that. Now, there are speculations that, okay, in the preparation of the meal, there could have been, uh, even though uh, 12 uh, disciples sat with Jesus uh, at the table and they, they had the meal with him, uh, in the preparation of the food, others could have been involved. And um, who those people are, we, we have no idea. Some people say that it would uh, it could be women because women... Um, were known to prepare these meals, but uh, it it could also be you know someone else. So could Matthias have been one of those men who prepared the meal? You know we wouldn't know the answer to uh, this question. So uh, that's that's what it is. And um, I, I mean, if it helps in some way to know whether uh, Matthias was part of that uh, Passover uh, meal, then you know. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to answer that for us. Okay, so now going back into what we were studying, we said that uh, Jesus 
spoke about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and um, okay uh, if I may just say Elisha I think your uh, camera is on if you don't mind if you could please uh, have it on uh, off that would be helpful thank you thank you for your cooperation yes uh, so we said that uh, Jesus spoke about the uh, things pertaining to the kingdom of God uh, and uh, after that was the the promise you know, of the father that uh, Jesus talked about um, and he encouraged his disciples to wait for the empowering of the Holy Spirit before they went and did any work of the ministry uh, and then you know is the uh, selection or you may want to call election of uh, uh, Matthias as led by the Holy Spirit um, and later we see that the apostles uh, along with other disciples are gathered together seeking um, God for this gift of the uh, the Holy Spirit or the promise of the Father okay, in the upper room. So that's where uh, we are at and we will pick up from there. But before we uh, get further into this, uh, any thoughts, questions about what we have learned so far? Okay, uh, how about, you know, why is it that Jesus asked his disciples to wait? Why couldn't they go and do the ministry without the uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit? What do you all think about that? Pastor said the question again. Uh, I'm say I said, why did Jesus want the disciples to wait to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit before they did the ministry? Why couldn't he have just blessed them and sent them out? Because you know we have a huge task on hand, isn't it, to reach the ends of the earth, and it's uh, um, it it would be good for the believers to start right away. Uh, pastor, it, there it is like two way mm -hmm. because it, it had already been pre-programmed by the by the father mm -hmm. before he went. He told them, "Wait until I send you the gift of the the father that he has promised." Mm -hmm. And then um, he the blessing would work; it has the power, but. He, he had again said that I'm not going to leave you as often as I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going mm -hmm. to send you a helper. They needed the helper to do that. And then he, again in the book of John, he said, when the teacher has come, he will teach you everything. So that means that the coming of the Holy Spirit, the waiting would now bring on board a teacher that would teach them some of the things that might have not been understood because there are some that are, were going to join the, 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 the group when they had not seen Jesus. So they would now have the teacher in the, in the, in the group who would teach them. Thank you. All right, thank you, Charles. So uh, uh, you said two things, that they were asked to wait. Um, and secondly, that the Holy Spirit is that great teacher who would lead us into the things of God. Uh, and for these two reasons, the disciples had to wait. Any other uh, reasons why the disciples had to wait? Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, Christopher, before I come to you, I can see some answers on the chat and I will read it out. Asha says, uh, I think because he was with them. Okay, so... 
all right uh subhajit uh, says maybe because they need to be born again first which was only possible after the crucifixion okay and kung says uh, with the holy spirit we can do the impossible if it was just by us it would not bear witness okay thank you thank you for those answers uh, yes christopher yes pastor so um i think the um there was a void that was created uh you know when 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 jesus would you know would leave and uh that's why he you know he he really uh you know um, wanted them to to have someone um uh, you know to be with them to give them the power give them the uh you know um, the strength to uh take the message uh you know across the different um uh, geographies so um for me i think the the point is that the holy spirit is as mentioned by a few other people that it's it is um uh you know a blessing and grace that has been given to us to uh you know have the holy spirit and uh that can you know potentially uh, make us um, a lot more effective in um uh, in preaching, teaching, as well as um, you know, uh, in the in the healing of, of um, people uh, who require that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you for sharing your view and also uh, for stating that uh, with the Holy Spirit that we would be a lot more effective. Okay. So these are uh, uh, many of uh, much of what uh, all of you all said uh, is uh, uh, correct. Um, we know that Jesus promised the uh, gift of the Holy Spirit, which is also known as the promise of the Father. So in Luke 24, um, verses you know, 48, 49, there he calls this gift, which would be given to the believers as the promise of the Father. This wasn't something new because later... Uh, you know, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we will see uh, today that Peter gives a sermon. And in that sermon, he quotes from the book of Joel and connects the phenomenon or the event of the baptism in the Holy Spirit to a prophecy of Joel. So Joel 2.28. So this was for told about um, uh, you know the uh, gift that the father would give his believers so that is one thing this was already something that god had planned and uh, based on what uh, all of us said and sorry i'm just sharing a scripture here in the chat uh, this is from john chapter 16 and verse 7 um, uh, from the nkjv version it reads nevertheless i tell you the truth it is to your advantage that i go away for if i do not go away the helper will not come to you but if i depart i will send him to you so you know uh, the ministry of the holy spirit is beneficial for the equipping and the empowering of the believer uh, and that is the reason why jesus wanted every believer to have the holy spirit okay so that is one thing but we also recognize that there are two separate experiences one is the new birth in christ jesus which is a product of uh, the work of the holy spirit Okay, in any human being so we cannot be born again without the work of the holy spirit in us and in john 3 you know, we see that jesus talks about the work of the holy spirit when uh, nicodemus comes and asks him how can one be born again so uh, th there are many other scriptures that tell us that the holy spirit is involved in the new birth that uh, uh, the second separate experience that you know we will see is the baptism in the holy spirit so there are two experiences one is being born again uh, and the second is the outpouring of the holy spirit now uh, in in both of this or uh, rather the baptism in the holy spirit now where the disciples born again 
while they were asked to wait for the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The answer would be yes. Because if you look at John chapter 20, you see that you know, Jesus breathes on the uh, disciples. And you know he says, receive ye the Spirit uh, in John chapter 12. Uh, and that you know is them being born again because before that you know uh, they were not born again jesus had not died yet uh, and jesus had not given his spirit to them yet uh, but after his death burial and resurrection you know he does this of of breathing upon the believe, on the disciples and that tells us that they were born again by the work of the spirit you know breath we'll see later uh, breath is uh, Rua, or you know, it it is uh, related to the Holy Spirit in in scriptures in many places. So the born again experience was something that the apostles had experienced, and Jesus asked them to wait even after that, and said that they need a separate experience, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which will empower them to do what they needed to do in the world. And that's why in John 16, 7, he knew that it's advantages. It's an advantage for us to have the Holy Spirit with us. And even Jesus, in all of his ministry, as you read about him, even in Luke chapter 4, when uh, we read about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness and he comes out of the wilderness, you know, the scriptures tell us, I think it's Luke 4, 14, where he came with the power. He came with the power of the Spirit. So the signs, wonders, miracles that Jesus was walking in uh, were uh, because of the Holy Spirit who was working in and through Jesus. Okay, So this is the reason why the baptism in the Holy Spirit was so crucial. And Jesus knew that the ministry of the believers, though they could do ministry, they could go and speak about the Lord Jesus and all that he did and, uh, you know, give a call for people to uh, accept Christ, be born again. You know, it wouldn't be as effective as God wanted it to be. And that is why, you know, Acts 1, he says, uh, and you shall receive power when the uh, Holy yeah. Spirit has uh, come that. upon you. And you shall be that. my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. So uh, the power okay, to be a, a witness with power is what Jesus wanted for the believers. Um, any any questions, any doubts, or uh, can we move on from here? If things are clear? I just wanted to clarify, a Pastor. Yes, yes. Uh, can, can, uh, can we do the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, before the uh, uh, you know, baptism, uh, or before the water baptism, or, you know, uh, before the, the the person actually uh, goes through that uh, that process of you know accepting God, accepting Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, yes, uh, Christopher, a good question there. Can the Holy Spirit baptism take place before water baptism? Answer is yes. Okay, but the prerequisite is the person has to be born again. So if a person is born again, then one can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit well before the baptism in water. So that is one answer. Then uh, in what you just uh, said, Christopher, you said uh, uh, being baptized in water uh, 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 or being born again. So actually, both of these um one could be baptized in water but they not be they may not be born again okay uh being born again is is um you know you you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the lord jesus so that's how be born again takes place and water baptism is our um you know, display of that decision which has been made. Okay, so water baptism in itself does not help one be born again. 
but water baptism comes after one is born again. Uh, is that okay, uh, Christopher? Yes, thank you. All right, yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, it's good, you know, we are getting uh, uh, deeper into things here and it's, you know, really power packed. It's so hard to complete uh, the book of Acts in three months. Um, you can just stay there on each word and, and you know, it could take hours to just try and unpack all that. Uh, that one word has in itself. For example, you know, we said martyrs for witness. So uh, can we be a witness without the baptism in the Holy Spirit? We can, but with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we become witnesses with power. And in Acts 1.8, he said, you shall be endured with power from on high. Power there is dunamis. Dunamis uh, uh, is... Um, what refers to the miraculous power of God. And so you see later on, after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the same disciples, you know, who were fearful, very confused, who did not have a focus in ministry, who were, uh, you know, just getting by uh, with, with regular uh, life, something happens to them. And uh, in uh, these 28 chapters of Acts, you see those same people uh, making an impact okay, among the people. How did that happen? That happened because the endowment of power from on high dunamis, you know, that made them a witness, the kind of witness that God wants uh, here on the earth. Witnesses with power who can not just, you remember when we touched on the uh, first few verses of the book of Acts, what did we read there? We saw in uh, uh, verse 1, you know, uh, uh, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So teaching, yes, we will teach, but there's also the demonstration of the power and the glory of God, which is what God wanted for every child of his. And that is the reason why Jesus said, you wait. You don't go yet. You wait for the baptism in the Holy Spirit and then you, know, you proceed. You will be able to uh, see a mighty impact wherever I place you. So uh, we've we've understood now that uh, being born again and being baptized in the Holy Spirit are two distinct experiences that every believer can experience. Okay, so um, from here we'll we'll move forward. Uh, so we saw how in the last. Um, session when we were uh, doing the last portions of Acts chapter 1. Uh, we had the selection of uh, Matthias and just put this in my Bible here. Taking longer than I expected. But he's just okay. So uh, the choosing of Matthias, and uh, now we come to uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. So you don't really um, see over there that, uh, you know, anything else happened. The disciples were gathered together, uh, and the selection of Matthias happened. So that is the end of uh, Acts chapter one. So in Acts chapter two, 
we have understood that uh, the disciples are waiting and they're <coughs> together you know seeking god because what did jesus tell them he told them that in a few days from now you know the holy spirit will be poured out upon you and this is a great thing because you know it's a prophecy which will be fulfilled um, and we see the power of prayer okay so just a digression even when we have a prophetic word from god we need to pray it through and somehow the the believers here seem to understand that they could have just uh, thought to themselves that anyway jesus said in a few days from now the holy spirit will be poured out on us so you know let's just do whatever the, we want to do and you know if he has to pour out the spirit he will pour out the spirit it has to happen because god has spoken it but that was not the attitude we saw how they were all gathered together in the uh, upper room and they were uh, in a prayerful attitude okay so that prayerful attitude is very important even when we know the prophetic word we have to carry a uh, uh, a posture of seeking god where we say god we know you have spoken we know you will do it and we are waiting for it and that was the way the uh, disciples okay uh, uh, went about seeing this word fulfilled so there was 120 of them in the upper room they were gathered so you had the disciples who had gathered there and you also had uh, other believers who had been with the lord jesus you know from the uh, beginning so uh, it, it is said that there were many women who were part of uh, this group there was the family of jesus you know, the mother of jesus the brothers of jesus so they were all part of this one 20 and they were waiting for what jesus had spoken of so it, uh, the scriptures tell us when the day of pentecost had fully come the day of pentecost was a festival that was held 50 days after the passover and uh, at this time the people in in jerusalem the devout people in jerusalem they celebrated the 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 festival of the first fruits of wheat harvest okay by uh, tradition or by uh, what god had asked them to do so this is what would take place in jerusalem so jesus once he died uh, uh, during passover we know that he was resurrected and 40 days he appeared to um, the people and he ascended up into heaven so uh, it is something like 10 days of waiting so once jesus had ascended these believers had to wait 10 days for this promise to be fulfilled and finally you know that day of festival came but uh, remember this the disciples did not know that the baptism in the holy spirit would happen on this particular day you know who knows they probably thought that the baptism would take place uh, immediately or uh, maybe some of them would have anticipated you know three it might happen on the third day or it might happen on the fifth day it might happen on the seventh day because seven is a number of perfection you know they would have had their own views uh, about when god was going to fulfill this promise but you know he kept his word he said in a matter of days in a few days from now it did happen but it was 10 days you know since jesus had ascended so uh, it again you know shows us about our attitude that we should carry regarding the prophetic word stay in prayer wait be persistent don't give up what if those 120 people you know threw in the towel and said enough you know it's not yet happened when is god going to send his holy spirit you know uh, we will not continue in this way in prayer but that's not what happened they stayed on and they prayed okay uh, so the day of pentecost had fully come and again one more thing that i want us to note here about the day of pentecost is it was a huge festival for uh, the believing jews so the believing jews from uh, far and wide were gathered in the city of jerusalem at that time so it was a season for travelers many many travelers uh, it, it would have been 
very crowded in the city of Jerusalem at that time. And uh, we also have, you know, our, our 120 uh, uh, disciples here who are waiting upon the word of the Lord which was spoken to them. Then we see that they were all with one accord in one place. Okay, very interesting. One accord. One accord. What does that signify? No, it signifies being together. It signifies togetherness of heart. Okay, so when they were in one accord, we understand that uh, they were all in faith for what was spoken by God. Okay, it's possible for us when we pray together in as a community or you know teams or groups of people that we could be physically present in togetherness, but not have the oneness of heart. Okay, uh, but in this case, they were together physically, but they were also together in their heart. That is what one accord means. So they were gathered together in one accord. Uh, and you know, another beautiful term that I want to use to describe this one accord in one place is unity. Unity perfectly describes what their hearts were like. They were uh, hungry to see the manifestation of what God had promised. All of them fervent, earnest in prayer. All of them seeking one goal. Whatever Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, we want it so that we can go out and be witnesses uh, uh, for this Jesus wherever he sends us. So that's the way in which you know, they uh, waited upon the Lord. Now, let's uh, continue. We see in the next verse, okay, and suddenly, so many a time, the fulfillment of God's, uh, you know, prophetic word in our lives is like this. We are waiting on it and we may also think that, hey, has God forgotten? But then there are the suddenlies of God. This suddenly is not really a suddenly in the sense that God had spoken to them and revealed to them. Know what is going to happen so it wasn't um, uh, a completely new thing which god did uh, they knew that this is supposed to happen but the timing of when this happened was a uh, suddenly okay so i'll just come back to that suddenly i'm looking at the screen and the chat here uh, there are some questions if they are in Aligned to what we are discussing now, I will answer them. Uh, so Manohar says, how uh, we can clearly perceive that a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit? Okay, we'll have the answer to that, uh, uh, Manohar, as we go forward. Then Abhishek, Pastor, do we need to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit like the disciples? Excellent question. In fact, uh, you know, I, I was hoping that this question would come up when we said Jesus told them to wait. Okay, so uh, uh, I'll answer Abhishek's question and I think Brother Manoa's question will be answered later. For us now, Abhishek, we don't have to wait a 10-day period or any duration for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, why? Why is that? When you look at the book of Acts, you see that you know, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit almost immediately after believing. So nobody practiced this waiting anymore. The only time we see the waiting is uh, for the first baptism in the Holy Spirit, which was uh, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. Okay. Beyond that, you don't see that example in the early church at all, now, which is why we do not practice waiting for baptism uh, in the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that that in itself would um, answer your question completely. Uh, is it helpful, Abhishek? Or did you have any follow up questions to that? Okay, great. Right. So uh, I know that, you know, we, we have all these concepts where um, we think, okay, once you're born again, you need you know, X amount of time before you can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But uh, it's it's really funny. Like if you look at, look at uh, uh, I think it's Acts chapter 10, where uh, 
a person called uh, Cornelius, who's a Gentile, okay, hears the gospel, he receives it even before Peter can lay hands on him while Peter is talking, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. And Peter says at that moment, you know, if God did not uh, stop, like he gave these people the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, why should we stop them from being baptized in water? So they go ahead and they get them baptized in water after that. So you see how God is working? God didn't wait, you know, even a day for Cornelius and his family to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So our answer would be, we don't have to wait or tarry uh, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit can happen in the next breath, you know, after one is born again also. Okay, so that's how it is. Uh, yes, uh, Shri Kumar, I see your hands raised. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I agree with your uh, point, uh, but I just want, I have a small doubt on that. Um, uh, even uh, what you said is absolutely right. But uh, there is, uh, but I have seen many people even after taking baptism, uh, they are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, like you know, they are not praying in tongues, um, and that that signs of the baptism is it because of the ignorance of the people, or um, or what is what, what is the reason that they uh, that baptism of the Holy Spirit is not getting manifest? My second question is, um, I wanted to know that. Um, um uh, when the apostles were there on the um, um uh, on the upper room um they were um now i want you to help me to understand this um they were under they they took the baptism of john the baptist and um so now when you read the book of acts chapter 19 verse 3 and 4 you will find that uh, paul also asked them that which baptism you took and they gave them the baptism uh, when then he gave the baptism in the name of Jesus. After that, they received the Holy Spirit. So is it possible that it is not in the scripture, but is it possible that um, did uh, the apostles also took the baptism before the before the, you know, before they got baptized with the Holy Spirit? Hope you understood my question. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. That yes. is my Yes, thank you, Shri Kumar. I hope, uh, you know, I will remember it in order and answer properly. So the first one is you said, uh, even when someone's baptized in the Holy Spirit, how is it that they don't manifest it, right? Is that... Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Well, yeah. Well, okay. It takes time, like, you no, know, I, I saw some in people have not, it, like, that praying in tanks is... For my brother itself, it took uh, around five years to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even though he, he took the water baptism, but it took a lot of time. My younger brother... Is still not baptized. So I saw so many other people also. They are not praying in tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not at all. But in my case, it was different. So I understand what you're saying. So yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I think uh, uh, in practice, you you see different um, you know different experiences that people have, uh, and the reason why some may not like people may go for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, they may not receive it uh, for various reasons. Maybe you know, they don't have a proper understanding uh, because it all depends on on faith. Okay. Um, so if they don't have a proper understanding, many a time, like at, at least I have seen people come in knowing the theory of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but deep within, um, they they have, uh, an, you know, some apprehension. They're not very open. Like, what if I get baptized? I, I'm not sure if I want to speak in tongues. I'm not sure if, you know, uh, I want all this that is being spoken of. So we really don't know the internal, uh, you know, state of mind of a certain individual. But I believe God is very gracious. So I, I do know that pe there are many people like they go um, and for whatever reason, whatever reason they don't receive it uh, uh, even after prayer uh, but the right thing to do is to keep going back and praying for it uh, Shikmar, because we see that this is the promise of the father which he wants for all his children so um, keep going back like if you don't receive it then keep going back okay but if you have received it then for someone to uh, use it or uh, let's say with the one of the basic gifts, which is the gift of speaking in tongues, we need to 
speak in tongues and take the initiative to do it because we will see later that it is even though the spirit was poured out and the spirit gave the utterance it is the believers who spoke so it took their will and their faculties you know for this uh, language of of the holy spirit to be heard uh, from them so yes the holy spirit will give us but we have to speak so as a believer if i am baptized uh, with the holy spirit and i can speak in tongues but i don't speak in tongues it's not that the holy spirit is not giving me the utterance but i am not speaking so one has to take the initiative okay so that uh, is about your first uh, part the second part uh, would be uh, baptism in water uh, you're asking if the disciples of jesus were baptized in john's baptism which is uh, in water and is of repentance i i you know you don't really read that they were baptized and all that but my assumption is yes because jesus himself was baptized you know and uh, he he whatever he did he uh, got his disciples to follow the same path so it's most likely that all of these disciples were baptized in water okay uh, does that answer your question no my question is i understood that my question mm -hmm. is did they took an another baptism in the name of jesus because um, in the book of acts uh, it says that you uh, know in 1934 when the when when the paul finds some uh, some disciples of john and later um, you know they uh, they uh, later they try to uh, then he asked that did you heard about the holy spirit then he said no no uh, then he gave the baptism in the name of jesus so my question is did all those 120 people who are in the on the on the upper room did they also took the baptism in the name of jesus before receiving the holy spirit that is my question uh it's possible in, i yeah, that's, yeah, yes. I, I would just uh, leave it with that, uh, Shikman, because we don't have... Yeah, that's why, because first, that yeah? is one, one doubt I was always in my mind that, uh, like, as last time I asked the Matthias thing. So this ah. is also one of the doubt I have that uh, whether they took that another baptism in the name of Jesus before the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's my question. Because I know, it's as you said, we know that, yes, uh, they absolutely, they have followed Jesus and they took the baptism of the john the baptism but did they took the baptism in the name of jesus that is my uh my uh, my doubt actually thank you pastor yeah sure thank you so okay. it's possible but we don't yeah, read about it yeah that's why because of the uh, based on acts chapter 19 verse 3 4 i asked i asked that question because paul gave the baptism of um you know in the name of jesus to those disciples then the holy spirit comes so that's why my question i connected that question okay sure. yeah, thank you pastor thank you all right yeah Thank you. Uh, Abraham, I see uh, a comment here. It says, Pastor, please, what is the right way to pray for someone to receive the Holy Spirit? Uh, receive the Holy Spirit, teach them first or just pray, even if they do not understand it. Okay. So my easiest answer to you, Abraham, would be to uh, you know download the publication Holy Spirit Baptism, uh, which which is available for you in um, PDF form from apcw.org forward slash books. Uh, and it will answer all you know, the, the questions that you have here. How do we pray for baptism in the Holy Spirit? And uh, you know, how do we teach people about the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And I think by the time we finish uh, Acts chapter 2, you will also um, have an idea, slight idea about it. Okay, so I hope that's fine. Just for, uh, you know, a paucity of time, I don't want to go too much into just one uh, concept here. Uh, yes, uh, Christopher and Mangi, we are stuck at Acts chapter 2, verse 1. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Christopher. Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, actually, I have two, uh, two questions. One is... Uh, if you could just share a little bit about your own personal experience after you got the Holy Spirit baptism. Um, you know, the point I guess is, you know, that we have uh, a very, very dramatic um, transformation uh, in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know when, the, when the disciples actually got, uh, got received the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I just wanted to understand a bit on that. The second thing is, and is, um, uh, maybe uh, maybe it's a question you may, you will answer later. But uh, 
there are some people who have, have concerns about uh, speaking in tongues and uh, uh, mainly because of the fear that uh, that uh, the devil can can influence a person speaking in tongues and uh, you know have uh, uh, you know influence a person uh, when they're doing that uh, so they have some concerns whether they should even speak in terms and they have that fear. So I just want to get some clarity on that. Yeah, sure, uh, Christopher. Uh, so to answer your first question about my personal experience, um, uh, I was born again, uh, you know, around the age of 11. And uh, since then, I I had exposure because, you know, my mom would take me to all these meetings and I would see people, you know, speaking in tongues. And uh, so I, I had no... Um, like mentally, I, I did not have any block about baptism in the Holy Spirit as a child. Um, I also had some people prophesy over me. So I had a positive experience uh, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I remember, I think maybe I was 13 years old or something. So I went for a particular meeting. And uh, on the last day of the meeting, the preacher he gave an analogy. He said, you know, the Holy Spirit is like a water. Just imagine that there's this huge tank, uh, uh, you know, up above. And for us to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you would just have to open the tap. And to open the tap is to believe and to just open your mouth and words will come. And it was as simple as that for me. I just prayed and I just started flowing. I in speaking in tongues so since then you know i have been speaking in tongues but it's true that i did not have much understanding about the value of speaking in tongues it was when you know i i was in college that uh, you know i heard a teaching about speaking in tongues and i realized at that time that god wants us to use the gift till that time i would just randomly speak you know in a prayer meeting here there whenever uh, but after I heard the teaching is when I became more consistent and, you know, started using the gift regularly uh, and, and came to know that, you know, it will build me up as a person and all that. So that's how uh, it is, Christopher. And the second question that you asked where uh, people are afraid that when we pray and ask God for the gift of tongues, um, that we might receive something from the devil instead but you know we have to uh, go by what the word of god says so if you look at uh, matthew chapter 7 you know that's the passage where jesus says you know ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks uh, receives everyone who seeks finds everyone who knocks the door will be open so it's you know the way of of speaking is uh, that jesus uses the style of speaking uh, in in uh, literature is one of convincing the audience because they he's repeating the same thing he's saying if you ask you will receive so that's that's the um uh, you know confidence with which he spoke about asking god and as you go on further in that passage he says that it has pleased the father to give you the kingdom okay and the kingdom is with the power of god kingdom is associated with the power of god and uh, we we know that he was actually telling the people that if you ask God for the Holy Spirit. If you ask God for the kingdom, you will receive it. You know, so don't doubt one bit. Will a father give a son who asks for bread? Will he give him a stone? So Jesus lit literally is trying to convince the believer that you will receive, you know, God's spirit and his power. Don't doubt it one bit. So whenever we pray for the Holy Spirit, we can encourage the people and tell them, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, you will receive the Holy Spirit and the language which will flow out of you will be from the Holy Spirit. Don't ever have a single, you know, like an iota of doubt that what will come out of you will be of the devil. How can it be? You know, you ask God, how can the devil give you a, a language, you know, an unknown language? So uh, I, I hope that helps, uh, Christopher. Yeah, it's not just about the receiving part, but I yeah. think someone who is who has received it, and then you know yes. they they mm -hmm. start uh, possibly uh, you know getting uh, in exhibiting uh, devil like um, you know um, it it doesn't seem to be coming from the Holy Spirit for someone who is who has received it already. So uh, maybe there is uh, I don't know what uh, how. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I kind of get what you're saying. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. But uh, the point I would make, Christopher, is when somebody is speaking in tongues, 
it's very hard for us to discern you know is this person speaking by the holy spirit is this person because we don't understand the language even by their expressions it's very hard for us to tell and so i i, I think you all have learned this in the keys to supernatural ministries ministry wait for the fruit the fruit will tell you know whether or not uh, the you know that manifestation of the gift is from the holy spirit or not so in that moment it's very hard to tell you know is it from the devil is it from god does that make sense right that's okay thank you okay great okay so uh, we will take a break 10 minutes we'll come back at 10:01 and move past acts chapter 2 verse 1 okay so see you all soon hope uh, you can you know refresh yourselves and uh, be back thank you <laughs>